What's up, guys, and welcome to the next Cracker Pack episode. Today we are opening up, excuse me, a pack of Hour of Devastation, obviously a relatively new set, one that I'm not super excited about in general. I actually really enjoyed the, the previews for this set, but as I played it more and more, I just kind of got tired of it pretty quickly. Uh, that being said, drafting was actually pretty fun, and of course we're going to look at this from a draft perspective, so we'll figure out what our pack one, pick one card would be uh, if we were actually in a draft setting. Of course, uh, sitting at the top of the value train, of course we have things uh, like the invocations uh blood moon i believe is sitting at the top right around 200 uh thought sees just under that at 160 of course the gods are fantastic lotus god has been a perfect uh, a personal favorite of mine uh but of course scarab god is i believe the most uh expensive and definitely the most played uh so we'll see what we get we will of course go through every single card in this pack uh, so hopefully we get some interesting stuff and we can learn something along the way. But our first common here, Disposal, disposal Mummy, excuse me, a 2-3 for 2 and a white. When it enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Uh, this was okay in the zombie deck just because it was a zombie. Uh, other than that, it's really not that exciting. It's kind of filler at best. Uh, Kenross Scrapper, 2-3 for 2 and a red. It has Menace, and when you exert it as it attacks... Uh, it gets plus two plus oh until the end of the turn. This is a good aggressive card uh, just in general. The menace really helps because obviously it's some evasion uh, and if you exert you you're able to deal a lot more damage with it so that makes blocks a little bit worse and hopefully you can just kind of deal some direct damage to the face with it. Uh, so far that's definitely above the disposal mummy. <laughs> Uh, Tragic Lesson is an instant for two and a blue. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. Uh, this is a fine draw spell. I don't tend to want to pick draw spells too early uh, unless I'm already kind of in the blue archetype, then maybe I would. So, so far, not going to pick that. Uh, Rona Stalwart, a 2-2 two, two for two. You may exert it as it attacks, and if you do, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked with creatures with power two or less this turn. Uh, this is a perfectly fine aggressive two drop. It's a two, two for two, no matter what. Uh, and it gets a buff if you exert it. So for that reason, I do kind of like that. Uh, as so lethal sting two and a black, uh, sorcery as an additional cost to cast it, put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature. You control destroy target creature. Uh, so far this beats out everything else. It's a kill spell. Yes, you get a negative one, negative one counter on a creature of yours, but there's actually a deck built around that. The green black deck actually thrives off of the negative one counters. So for that reason, I really like that. Uh, Oasis Ritualist, three and a green for a two four. Uh, you can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. You can also tap it and exert it. Add two mana of any one color to your mana pool. So I like this actually. It's good uh, fixing for the big ramp deck, which there is one in this format. I don't like it more than Lethal Sting though, so for that reason I'll put it to the side. <clears throat> uh, God Pharaoh's Faithful is a 0 4 for 1 white. Whenever you cast a blue, black, or red spell, you gain one life. This card has always seemed really weird to me, even since uh, the very beginning. It forces you to feel like you kind of have to be in a four color deck. Obviously you don't, you can just be in like a two to three color deck if you wanted to. Uh, but even then you're just gaining a couple life off of this and it just doesn't seem all that useful. Late game, it's a terrible card to draw. So for that reason, I do not like it. Uh, Striped River Winder is six and a blue for a five five with hex proof. You can also cycle it for one blue. This card is fantastic. Uh, it's actually hit Popper Reanimator. Uh, and I believe it hit, uh, oh goodness, the, the living end. Yes. Living end in modern. Uh, it actually sort of changed the deck to be much more blue focused. Uh, so I really like this card. I'm not sure above lethal sting, but we will see. Uh, gilded Ceridon is a four, four for four and a red when it attacks. If you control a desert or there is a desert card in your graveyard, target creature can't block this turn. This is a decent top end for a uh, just red aggro deck, uh, especially if you do pick up a couple deserts, which is very likely in this set. Uh, so I like this card. I don't think I like it more than either of the other two that we've pulled out so far, though. Uh, our first uncommon, Imaginary Threats is two and two blue for an instant. Creatures target opponent controls attack this turn if able. During that player's next untap step, creatures he or she controls do not untap. 
Uh, you can also cycle this for two. I like this in a tempo strategy. I think it's perfectly fine. Again, I'd rather pick something a little more direct, like a kill spell in Lethal Sting, or just a giant kind of bomb creature in the Riverwinder here. So I don't think I'll pick that. Bloodwater Entity is a 2-2 for one, a red and a blue. Uh, it has flying and prowess. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. Uh, I actually don't like this card in Limited. Uh, I think it has a lot of upside if you build your deck around it, but then you're kind of forced into playing a lot of instants and sorceries, and that can definitely be fine, but I prefer to go creature heavy in a, uh, in a draft format, and so for that reason, I don't like that more than what we've got so far. Uh, Desert's Hold, two and a white, uh, enchant creature. When uh, this enters the battlefield, if you control a desert or there is a desert in your graveyard, you gain three life. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities cannot be activated. This is great. It's white removal. Again, uh, as we've talked about before in other Kraka packs, blue and white tend to have much more enchantment removal, and this is a perfect example. You do get a little bit of a life buff sometimes if you happen to have a desert. You by no means need it to actually make this card good, though, so I do like that. And our rare is Emmet Eternal. It is two and a black for a 5-5 five five with Afflict 3. Uh, which says whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses three life. Uh, when an opponent casts a spell, put a negative one, negative one counter on Emmet Eternal. And um, whenever it deals damage to a player, remove all negative one, negative one counters from it. I love this card. I think it's great. It's very aggressive at three. Uh, they're probably only going to be able to, to play one spell at a time, and then they're going to have to just chump block it a lot to actually get it to just kill itself. Uh, and so for that reason, I like that a lot. Uh, we do have a foil here. Solitary Camel is a 3-2 for 3. Uh, it has lifelink as long as you control a desert or there is a desert card in your graveyard. This honestly is great filler in a white deck. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's fine, and it definitely does not beat the Eternal. So uh, that is definitely going to be my pick. I do think we had a couple decent options here with Lethal Sting, Desert's Hold, and Striped Riverwinder, though. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about this pack. If you enjoyed this episode of the Kraken Pack series, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. We've got tons of it coming at you every single week, at least five episodes, or excuse me, five videos uh, every single week. So hopefully there's a lot of stuff for you guys to enjoy. But with that, I am going to get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you in the next one.